Oh, hell. Shit's getting real. Shit's getting real. What's up, everyone? What's up? Hello, hello. Let me stop this. Mm, alrighty there. What's up, everybody? Hello, hello. What's going on? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is this thing working? <clears throat> What's up, Lord Commander Manny? What's up, man? Uh, Meg Paul, JB, Bandersnatch, Dark Side Droids. What's up, man? K Dubs, Jennifer, Lady Jen, Jimmy, Nata, Legal Jedi. Hello, Legal. Been a while. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um. Zara, what's up? Will she drink it? Uh, what? Probably, probably not. I don't know. It didn't, it, it, that really won't matter. Well, that's we'll, we'll definitely get to that. Hey, buddy, just lay down and relax. Um, what's up, everybody? All right, all right. So we're back. Sorry about last week. Uh, we did stream Tuesday. We we've, we've had some issues, but. Um, Tina Riddick's doing good. He's recovering from his surgery. It didn't completely stop the bleeding. Um, he did bleed last night some. So if you do see me looking over my shoulder over here, that's what I'm doing. Um, but it did cut it way down. So hopefully we can, you know, can heal now. So I know a lot of people is wondering, and I appreciate all the messages and love. I really, really appreciate it, y'all. Um, it's been insane for a month now, but uh, we have to, we have to go on. We have to go on. So I'm watching him. He's right here beside me. Um, they shaved his whole neck so he looks like a, a vulture. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, anyway, um, shit's getting real. Shit's getting real. So I guess what we'll do is normally uh, we'll go through our little our little note, my, my little chicken scratch notepad here, and um, we, will, we will go through it and then talk about whatever. It's going to be a little controversy here. I hope they don't uh, get too uh, modern with the uh, pol uh, political shit, but um shit's getting real for for real it's changing uh you can see uh now we're four years later so two two more years after the last episode i believe um what's up john mizuma doc Holiday. what's up everybody everybody hello hello um tonight is not the night for family first uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah this uh <clears throat> This family's falling apart. It's the beginning. It's the beginning. It's the beginning of the end. Um, but we got a ways to go. Uh, thank you, uh, John Ruck, for this super chat. Uh, Two dollar holla. Appreciate it. Thank, just because you're great. Thank you, man. Thank you, John. And Dark Side Droid Neff. Thank you, man, for the fifty, dude. Thank you, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Um, thanks a lot, man. Um, so I now I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting about the wig. I should have. Damn it! I, I'm I'm failing. I'm just like trying to rush up here. Uh, the, what was the show like? Uh, an hour fifteen? It was hour f or ten or something. It was a little longer, obviously. Um, so I think everybody's a little behind. Damn it! I should have grabbed the wig. All right. Um. So yes, we got a lot changing. So let's let me run through this really quickly, and then we'll talk about whatever free flow. And then at the end, we'll we'll, we'll watch the. Uh, I have not watched the next week's episode thing either. So I just kind of ran up here. So let's go through this and do our usual thing. Uh, I know there's there's the fail. There's the fail from Doc. I know, man. I keep <laughs> I keep forget I keep forgetting. Um. <clears throat> Uh, Dakota, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it, man. Has Masaria always been auto spy? Is she the one who egged uh, Damon on our air for a day? Uh, no, this is a show only thing. I think that's actually a pretty good twist to sh because she will play an important role as a whisperer later, and I won't go into spoilers, but that's uh, a show thing only to my knowledge. I don't remember anything about that. So, uh, Eric, thank you, man, for the Riddick fun. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Um, a lot of people have been asking about that, actually, just to really quit to get out of the way. Um, for anybody that know, Riddick had surgery. It's been a hell month for about since a, a month ago since we went to the mountains. He had a, a nasal bleed. He has an artery that busts, busted because of lupus that affects his nose. And so that's why last week I couldn't do anything. I was at vets back and forth. Um, I think I spent $6,000, $7,000. So uh, this has not been fun the last couple of weeks. So I apologize for the lack of content, but uh, you know, shit happens, I guess, and it's just something we we're dealing with. So he had a uh, surgery to um, they tied up his carotid artery, uh, which 
will stop the majority of the bleeding, but it still uh, will leak occasionally, I believe, until it heals fully, which is the uh, underlying condition gets better, which it already is a lot better. The lupus has to be put in remission. So that's what's been going on with Riddick, uh, just to clarify for anybody. I know a lot of you know, people were asking about, like, do you have a GoFundMe? I didn't set up any GoFundMe and stuff, so anything is appreciated. I really appreciate it. So thank you, Eric. Um and Dakota and Darkside, appreciate it, and John Rook. Um, anyway, so let's go through this. Just to, That was just an update to get jump right in because people get mad when I talk about other things and, and like promote my book and, <laughs> and all that stuff. Um, oh, oh, Jennifer, you hadn't watched it yet. Okay, yes, don't, yeah, go watch it. Enjoy, I, enjoy it. I, I thought you were, I thought you were called up. I'm sorry. Um, we don't want to, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, so, Get anybody, give everybody 30 seconds that has not watched, and we're going to jump right in. How about going, Jennifer? Thank you for stopping by. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric Mishima, what's up, man? Thank you for the 10. Thank you, thank you. Uh, dollars for doggos. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did, Eric. I had a comment a couple weeks ago, like, we know you wrote a book. You haven't got to sh- t- talk about it every single, like, no, nah, there's people that come back. I can talk about it. I wrote a book. I wrote a book. It's out. It's Crimson Gods. Go check it out. It's cheap on Amazon right now. Um, and, and by the way, thank you guys for more uh, uh, reviews on that book as well. Um, feeling the sun drop square of your smoke screen bingo. Oh, that's a good idea, JB. Smoke screen bingo. Uh, Josh, thank you for the super chat. Love your channel. You can promote anything you want, bro. Love the content. Thank you, man. Thank you, Josh. I really appreciate that, man. Um, thank you, guys. I really, really appreciate it. All right, so let's jump through this, and uh, then we'll get to any questions, free flow, conversation, whatever. All right, so episode four, two years later. Um, Renera's looking for a husband, apparently on Storm's End. Uh, we did see Storm's End. Uh, we didn't see the outside. Um, well, no, no, Liz, I'm not salty. I'm not salty, Liz. It's not, not me. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jules. So apparently we, we saw Storm's End. I guess she was there um, uh, go with... Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, shit. Um, so she was at Storm's End taking suitors to be uh, her, her uh, lawfully wed husband. Uh, that didn't go well. Um, the cool little shit, I mean, she was a, with Boris Baratheon. He's the Lord of Storm's End at the time. So Boris Baratheon was the Baratheon dude there, the Lord. He'll come into play later to probably season two. Um, actually, maybe at the end of season one, like I was talking about before, but I won't spoil anything. Um uh, so the cool little thing was you had a, a a Blackwood come up, the young Lord Blackwood, who was talking to Renera like, you know, she's, he's a young kid. And that's kind of they were making fun of this. You had this old man, then this young kid. The cool little Easter egg there was the people talking shit to him was a Bracken. Um, that's a big thing in the books. We won't get into it all here for the sake of this uh, little review. But that was a pretty cool little shout out. There's a big feud between House Blackwood and Bracken in the, uh, in the books. And that's always been a thing. There's a burnt weirwood tree involved, and it's a pretty cool little side story. So I thought that was pretty cool to have them talking shit. Um, but Renera, uh, I didn't, you know, she's acting a little spoiled at this point. Uh, it's kind of getting on my nerves. Um, they're really changing a lot of stuff that we were told. And again, this is fine. It's show canon. It's different from the book stuff. But Renera's acting a little, little, little bit like a brat, a, a, a bit more like a brat. And I mean, I get, or I get what she's saying. But uh, she says it about every episode now, so you know, just um, just just I just something I noted. Um, but you know, she's 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 got her reasons. Obviously, she, a lot of pressure, and she knows the situation. Uh, anyway, pretty cool little uh, shout out there with the Blackwood versus Brackens there. Um, but she ends it early, um, and then hops on a ship back to King's Landing, and that's when we get the Damon flyby uh, that we saw. Um, and it was just a fuck with her, I guess. She kind of smiles at him because you could kind of see, you know, she hadn't seen Damon in a while. She's always had this thing for him. Um, Lady Jen, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. Thank you for the two. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Eternal Master, for subscribing as well. Uh, I don't know. Hold on one second, actually. Uh, where is that? Um, let's see. Why is that covered? No, 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 no. What is that? Sorry. Uh, let me, one second here. I don't know why this is, all right, that, that, 
Um, all right, hold on one second. Let me remove that. Sorry, I don't know why. I don't know why things break. They they break whenever uh get on stream, of course. Hold on one second. Uh, there. Lots of lots of notifications. Lots of notifications. Uh, thank you guys. Hold on one second here for me. Nope, not that one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, that one. Okay, and then let me do that. I don't know why that broke. I have no idea. So let me just move. No. Sorry about that. I have no idea why that that was broken. I just moved that out the way there. All right, there we go. All right. Um, Josh, thank you for becoming a member as well. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, Josh Novasad. Appreciate that. Helps helps a lot. Uh, really does. Hedgy, thank you for the super chat. Get well soon, Ray. Thank you, man. Thank you. Appreciate that, Hedgy. Um, anyway, so Renee ends that early. She goes back to King's Landing. Obviously, uh, Damon flies over. Kind of piques her interest in uh, with Sir Chris and Cole there. I don't. Again, I don't know why. I guess it was just for that scene. She should be on her dragon, flying everywhere. Um, you know, she should. Uh, I don't know why she's taking boats. But Renee is not the type to take a boat. But I guess uh, it's a uh, it's, 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 it's fifty. Um, I guess it's, you know, for the scene. Um, <laughs> Natalie, thank you for the, <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Natal. Thank you for the 50, Natal. Thank you. This is for you to drink cold water <laughs> for the rest of the stream. What do you mean? What's wrong with, there's nothing wrong with my sun drop. I've been drinking a lot of water. Uh, anyway, thank you, Nat. Thank you, thank you. Um, so we get the, um, we get the scene where we talked about before where Damon is back in King's Landing after the war for the steps on he mentions Corliss, uh, has sailed back to Driftmark. He wasn't in, in this episode at all, but he plays a role a little bit towards the end, obviously. Um, and he offers his brother the whole, uh, crown thing that we talked about before. So he is now, they now rule the Stepstones, and Corliss is happy in that regard, but obviously still pissed about the whole Lena thing, uh, the marriage thing. So that was why he is not back on the council at this time. Um, but then, you know, that was cool to see about Cyrus and Damon kind of make up again. But of course, that changes every other time. I want to mention really quick too the tapestries. I don't know if this is every tapestry. We talked about the the um, uh, sexual tapestries throughout King's Landing. Uh, I'd I have Nata. I swear, every day I do drink some water. Every day, I do. Thank you, Nata. Thank you for your concern, though. <laughs> um, I really do, though. But the tapestry. Somebody mentioned. I think it was Allison or something mentioned in the little party they had. Uh, they had a little party in the God's Wood for Damon's return or whatever, which is what Viserys does. He gets drunk and has parties and lets it, wants everybody to get along. Um, so uh, you know, he, she mentioned the, the. I think it was Allison, I believe, who mentioned the tapestries from Cahor. So we've seen that city in Game of Thrones. Just a little thing, a little nod there I saw. And, and so apparently Viserys is the one that's been accepting these things and putting them up because I don't think it was Jaehaerys before him with all these weird Kama Sutra-style fucking tapestries. So not a little interesting thing I caught there. Um, and then uh, we do see Allison and Rhaenyra talk. Uh, and for now, they're still kind of friends. So it was... It was um, it's kind of cool to, to hold on that for like one last time before they're, you know, obviously it kind of... Uh, uh, changes when they have their next conversation that God would based off of uh, of what Rhaenyra's, you know, sneaking out we'll get to. Um, then Damon and Ray start their talk and they start to get closer. They haven't seen each other in a while, but she's always been infatuated with him. And this is one thing that was in the books um, that uh, it's it's not really clear. It depends on if you listen to Mushroom or Eustace or whoever, is that Rhaenyra was infatuated with Damon or vice versa. Um Obviously, Sir Kristen Cole, we got the answer to that tonight. But obviously, as, as you know, we're talking about show canon, be a different book canon. But yeah, co Mother Dragon Cohor. Um, yes, yeah, so yeah Betray King, Norris, and Cohor. Yeah. Um, but I, I, just a little thing I, I just called. I thought it was pretty interesting because we've always been questioning, like, who the hell is letting you know putting this shit up in the red keep? Um, let's see, Raising Cajun, thank you for the super chat as well. So the mystery of who clapped the dragon's cheeks is solved. <laughs> A dragon gets blue ball of Damon Head uh, at the end of the episode. Yeah, exactly. Raging Cajun. Thank you, Raging Cajun, for the super chat, man. Appreciate it. And K-Dubs, thank you for the super chat as well. 
uh, for the five. Matt Smith had to be like, the only reason I didn't segs my knees is I can't keep it up. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I thought that was uh, – I think he's just – I don't know. He's playing the, the tease. He was teasing. I don't know what he was doing there. I mean, I know what he's doing, but uh, he, he did it to – Show her a different side of the world, which I thought was actually pretty cool, the whole sneaking out thing. Get that in a second. Um, uh, so we we still hear about the Corliss thing, wanting to wed uh, Lena to uh, the Sea Lord of Bravo. So we hear like that, and that makes him, that makes it a little more, um, but Sarah's a little more pressure on him to bring him back into the fold. So I thought that was pretty cool. What's up, uh, Ungoliant? How you doing? Um, just finished watching. We just started, so I'm just going through it now. Uh, and then we'll we'll have the open Q and A as usual. Um, so I'm I'm still on the first little page of my chicken scratch notes. I don't have a lot tonight. Uh, as I think it's fairly self explanatory. I'm just mentioning a couple of little things I mentioned uh, or that I caught. So, but we see the kind of relationship start to change a little bit with Damon and Rhaenyra talking. And I still love how they're throwing in the High Valyrian uh, when other people are around, so they can speak how they want, and nobody knows they're talking about except uh, obviously Targaryens. So it's pretty cool. Um, so Corlys wanting to uh, to marry Lena, his daughter, to the Sea Snake, or I'm sorry, the um, um, Sea Lord of Bravos, a son of the Sea Lord, puts more pressure now on Viserys to get that house back in the fold. So I thought that was a good little touch. Um, we see Alicent real real quick shot of her apparently holding. Uh, it's got to be Aemon. If she, I think they said three kids now, four years. So this is Eamon. He's the third kid. So Helena's already probably two years old, I guess, or a year and a half, something like that. So we should we have three kids now. Um, um, and so that's how much time has passed from episode two, I believe. So I believe it's two more years since the last one, since Aegon was. So now Aegon would be four, I guess. Um, I believe so. Um, ready? Hey, hey. Sorry, he's. Uh, I think my I think my daughter's showing up. Mike Williams, yeah, we'll get to the the plan B, the T, um, the moon T. Um, so anyway, we see Allison hold Eamon. Uh, obviously, he'll come into play later. Um, I love the Renera disguise thing. I really like this this uh, scene. I thought it was cool. And they also, uh, obviously, Damon had dropped something in the room, a disguise, and then a little, uh, little I don't know, map of the secret passages around the Red Keep. She didn't know about them. So this goes back to the old days. Uh, Magor the Crow had these built uh, in, in the Red Keep. Um, so you had all these secret passages. Obviously, later on, Tyrion knows about all these in Game of Thrones and Varys as well. So that's kind of a little, a little, uh, little nod to there to 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 the current, um, I guess, timeline. I guess you could say, as far as uh, Game of Thrones. Um, then we see the Viserys bass scene. Um, you know, he's he's always they kind of always hinting at health issues or whatever. We won't go into what that may or may not be, uh, depending on they change if they change anything from the books. Um, but Allison kind of starts taking that. You can now see her being queen. I think that's a little different from previously where, you know, she married him. Hey, will you shut that for me, please? Uh, so she, <clears throat> she married him and now you can kind of see her like becoming, like doing her duty as queen, obviously. And that's kind of a theme throughout this as we juxtapose that with Rhaenyra still being a little, at least free that night. So that's what I liked about that scene was, that night she was like free, so she goes down to Flea Bottom, the Street of Silk, all that stuff as well. With Damon, they see a play. I thought that was pretty interesting, um, you know. And they're they're here, like she's getting the perspective of the the regular folk, as they say. <clears throat> so I thought that was pretty good. Um, she runs in. Uh, uh, this was no accident. She runs into Harwin Strong, who was a captain in the Gold Cloaks uh, under Damon, I believe. I, don't, I believe it was before Damon left, but obviously Damon's not the Lord Commander of, of that anymore. So uh, I believe he, I believe she said Sir Harwin, and I, I couldn't see it. kind of dark, so I couldn't see his face, but we saw him last episode, obviously. No accident there that she runs into Sir Harwin Strong break bones. So uh, that is... Um, that was an interesting little little tidbit there as well. And then we see all this time, this is juxtaposed, but she's having a night of kind of freedom and seeing the city as she never saw it before in disguise with Damon going to brothels and all this shit. We see, you know, uh, Alicent playing the queen, doing her duty, playing the role, and it even goes with the sex scene where she's just laying there like, okay, I got to just deal with this type of stuff. So they're making her a lot different from the books. You know, they're making it more about – her being used and abused as opposed to her wanting Aegon to be on the Iron Throne and her, um, you know, wanting power and all that stuff. And and so that's a little different. And it's for TV, so it's not exactly following. You know, and again, we're getting all the details we didn't get in the book, so it's it's fine. 
but they're they're just really showing the uh the you know it's more of a the the big theme here is obviously the the medieval idea of uh how women are are in westeros at least noble women in that sense so they're really they're really really pushing that hard um but in the books it's a lot different allison is uh like otto obviously is the asshole who kind of got her started but she buys into it and wants it just as much so they're really changing that a little bit so um for tv uh just just to throw that in there to to compare it um we see uh let's see um the the night out you know we we see uh we damon is out they go into the pleasure house right and then we we see a spy so we see the kid get up and follow so was, i don't know damon kind of teased her she did lie about that later they did touch but, but he, i don't think they went the whole route there i don't believe and then she he kind of just left her um kind of left her there while he went and did his own thing and she made her way back but you saw the kid get up and i knew that was trouble right there from in i like the way they did this by the way because that ends up being masaria and she will play a bigger role with kind of the master of whispers thing um later on i won't say any more than that just for spoiler sake but that is a good idea to set that up that way so having those uh those spies so um that ends up being that she was followed and of course uh, she goes back to the Red Keep, and we find out that uh, Sir Crispin, <laughs> Sir Crispin, does in fact break his vows and ride the dragon. Um, so she made the move on him. Uh, from the books, you wasn't sure either way. They left it open, and it's <laughs> just a tip, though, just a tip, Doc, because you saw him look down at his white. That was a good little touch there. The scene. You saw him look down at his white cloak and touch it because he took these vows. He's not he's supposed to be celibate. But he couldn't turn down the dragon. Can't say I blame him there. Um but so we get confirmation that it actually happened. We wasn't in the books, it's it's said by Mushroom that you know, uh one way with Mushroom that uh he wanted her, wanted to run off with her, and she like, you know, turned him down, and the other version is is she wanted him and he turned her down not to break his vows. And uh, yeah, Lavar, oh, Sir Chris Cole, <laughs> yeah, at the moment. Um, so, but uh, yeah, he he broke down and broke his vows, and now that's a big secret for a while. Uh, I'm assuming. But the good little touch though was the end when Damon's land. I don't even know where the hell he was laying. Somewhere in Flea Bottom, I guess. With um, Lady Misery, this is she'll become known as Lady Misery later. Masaria, his his uh, lover. This is time has passed now. She's no longer selling herself. She's selling information. So I thought that was a good touch because that will come into play later. Um, so she is the one who paid the kid or, you know, who Otto's paying her through the kid. So the kid is the spy. So we knew something was up and the kid followed Renera. So that caused her some trouble. Otto, of course, finds out from the kid, pays the kid. She goes back and pays Masaria. So she's now selling information. She's she's learned like uh, almost like a Shay in a way, a little uh, Shay vibe there. Uh, from the show. Um, Raising Cajun, thank you for the super chat again. He was barely an episode, but the cash choice for break bones is a letdown if he's supposed to be the strongest knight in the realm. Thoughts? Yeah, I thought the last episode, I thought it was odd. Just the, I don't mind his look or anything. I think his look's fine, but just the odd smile. Um, I don't know. It was it was just odd to me, like it was forced last week. Um, so I don't, I don't mind the look or anything, but uh, yeah, we'll see about the strongest knight in the realm thing. Um, We'll find out one of these days. Um, so I don't, I don't mind the casting. So I just thought like this one was fine here uh, for tonight because it was just obviously a quick thing. But that last one was just a little like the smile. Like he's over there cleaning the deer they had killed. She comes in with her own little boar from the from uh, the, the the attack and everything. And it was like, why is he smiling like that? They don't have a a history yet. They're already kind of letting you know what's going on a little ahead, a little ahead of time. So. I think it's fine. Um, not a big deal. Uh, you know, obviously not the main characters anyway, but he will play a big role, obviously. Um, so I thought that was a good touch with Masaria, you know, selling information. That'll come into play later. Uh, we see, of course, Otto tells Viserys that Rhaenyra, you know, basically screwed Damon um, in, the, in the brothel. Um, he doesn't know the full story, obviously. It, it almost happened, but it didn't. Um, he's a hottie. Can't blame Rhaenyra. No, I mean, I get it. You look, I mean, people are people, right? Um 
I, I'm not going to hold it against her, but she started with Damon, got her hot and bothered. He left her. He goes back, and then uh, that's just what happened. She was just uh, in the mood, and he was standing there, and he's, uh, you know, um, I don't know. I guess, uh, I guess he looked good. <laughs> so he rode the dragon. Um, anyway, so Viserys then starts to get wise. He's already been wise, but he's just kind of been denying it. He gets wise to Otto um, that he's mad at him that he had that he wants um, he knows he wants uh, his grandson uh, Aegon to be on the throne, and so he's mad that he actually has Rhaenyra followed in the first place. So I thought that was a good little touch too, um, not just a kind of a one sided thing where he finds out and goes attacks Rhaenyra or whatever. He actually questions it first, questions uh you know um, is it you know you were lied to? This is my daughter. She's not like that. Blah blah blah. Um, uh, obviously he's a little dumb in that regard, but he does at least question that. And why are you having her followed anyway? And kind of picks up on the idea that he's there with, you know, wanting him to name uh, a new heir, trying to spoil, you know, spoil her in every sense. So I thought that was a good touch too. But Sarah's kind of, um, catching on, uh, obviously too late. Um, so that was a cool little touch uh, there. I mean, Alice and Renera, they have their uh, next talk slash conversation slash argument and the gods would, and, um, she does end up telling her because uh, she heard the king and Otto talking, and what obviously uh, being in the room. And then she confronts her, and she, I think this Allison is trying to help her. She was genuinely upset about it, but it's like, um, but and so Renera did lie. I mean, she told her basically what had happened, but like Damon never touched me, but he did. Um, they just didn't follow through with it, and she of course left the rest of it out where she went back and then. Uh, you know, banged her king's guard. So <laughs> she, she left that part out. So she is now soiled, uh, and she's trying to get married, and that's a whole big thing, obviously. Um, so either way, uh, now next we have Damon is dragged into the Red Keep as he's walked stumbling back anyway by the king's guard, and basically Viserys, he just lets him, he, you know, Damon's obviously drunk or whatever still. Um, Viserys is older and he couldn't take Damon, but he pulls the knife on him and basically they have this falling out again and he doesn't even den deny it. This is what Damon's done before. It, it was similar with the whole air for a day thing in episode two, right? Where, um, you know, Balon had died and he said, you know, it's, he apparently said air for a day, but we don't know if he was doing it legitimately or not, or making fun of him. We still don't know that. And he just didn't deny it. Like, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, hurt him and Rhaenyra doing the thing. So it's just what he does. He just he 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 just lets shit fly. I don't know, because um, he's gonna believe it anyway. Even if he denies it, he'd still believe it, right? So that was his whole thing. That's kind of the relationship they have. So whatever he's told about the Damon is gonna be the truth, and if he denies it, then he's not gonna. It's still not gonna believe it. So he just doesn't deny it. I thought that's interesting. That's an interesting little character trait for Damon. He'll let him believe that stuff, um, true or not. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly, Jake. Somebody definitely broke the seal. Yeah, there's just a box left that the cherry came in for sure, uh, but it just was not Damon. So he lets that ride, though. He lets it ride, and uh, he doesn't deny it. We'll see if there's any uh, talk about that later, though. Um, anyway, so uh, he gets drug in there and um, basically, go back to your bronze bitch, go back to the veil, and he says, sure. Sure, brother, sure thing. So, he, you know, a couple days of peace, and then it's right back to the same old stuff. What's up, Count Ripley? How you doing, man? Um, anyway, so um, Damon does say, though, I do want Renera. Marry me to Renera. We'll put it back like it was. And he's accusing him of, and now he is actually, he does actually like Renera. Um, he does, but he, he, uh, he thinks it's just about him being closer to the throne, obviously. And he is, you know, he, he doesn't just want the throne though. He does genuinely like, uh, Rhaenyra. and in that family, it's not odd for an aunt and an uncle and all that stuff, you know, obviously. So if you take that out of your head, it's, it's, it, I think it is legitimate. I think that's, um, uh, you know, one of the, the good things about Damon is he's, uh, he's real no matter what, um, yeah, it is. It is, Mazuma, exactly. Uh, Mazuma saying, I think the Adam motivation is to fuck with your older brother by neither confirming or denying shit kind of passes. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly what he's doing. So he just does deny it at all. <clears throat> but he just lets it He lets, lets it go. Um, but he does say he wants Renera. That comes into play later, obviously. Um, uh, Allison by Saris, we go back to them. Um, and then, you know, we're, we see um, Allison is in this version of Allison is kind of just playing the role. I don't, 
they're they're acting like she's not on board with the Aegon thing yet or whatever. It's completely different in the books. Um, so I don't know why they're changing that for TV. Uh, any version. I mean, I know even I don't think any version really changes in the sense of that. Um, uh, so I don't, I don't know why they're, I mean, they're showing like what sh- her playing the role of queen and then Renera's having the night of freedom. I like that aspect of it, but it was, uh, I don't know. They're, they're pushing that a little too much, I think, uh, but things will obviously start to change. I mean, they're making, I guess, uh, the ideas for TV at least, um, and it's filling in all these details that you don't get in the book is you, you you're going to have feelings for both sides, right? When it splits into the blacks and the greens, um, You'll have you have these motivations, I guess you could say. So I guess that's uh, what they're doing, which of course makes sense. I mean, it's human nature. Um, I liked the talk with uh, Renera and uh, Viserys, her father. They talk about the dagger. We get the Jon Snow shout out, the Song of Ice and Fire. Um, uh, you know, from my blood, from my line will come the Prince who was promised, and his his song will be the Song of Ice and Fire. Obviously, that's a shout out to Jon Snow. Um, problem is, of course, is Game of Thrones season eight didn't really fulfill anything like that. I didn't feel like it, it, it even mattered, but still that's the Jon Snow shout out. But I like that. He said, it doesn't matter what the truth is only perception. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter that she didn't actually do anything with Damon. People think it, people believe it. And that's now what's going to be the reality. Um, so that was pretty cool to throw that in there. Um, but she does say, I will marry Lane or this is when he says that, look, you're marrying Lenor. We're bringing this house back into the fold. No more of this bullshit. I'll let you try to pick somebody. Yes, yes, Meg Paul and Anor shout out as well. Anor who, who brought over um, the Targaryens in the first place. So that was pretty cool. Um, throwing in some some history in there. A lot of uh, references to uh, the Conqueror Aegon, uh, as a matter of fact. Um, so she says, "I will marry Lenor Valerian. I'll do my duty, but you have to get rid of the Vulture, who is your hand." So she recognizes as well. What's up, Jason Weeks? How you doing? She recognizes Otto for what he is, and that's when uh, she makes the deal. And I guess Viserys uh, holds to it because he goes in there, um, basically says, "I knew, I knew, Allison got me through all this, helped me through this, ex- all that stuff, etc." But it was a well-conceived plot, essentially. So I just didn't see it at the time, obviously, and basically realizes that having Allison come to see him was all Otto's plan, and kicks his ass out. Says, "Bye, bitch, go back to Old Town." You're no longer handed the king. Appreciate your duties, but but I can't trust you anymore. You're you're uh, you're compromised because of self interest, all that good stuff as well. So kicks him off in agreement with um, uh, Renera marrying Lainor. So I guess we'll see that probably next episode. I'm assuming we'll see the wedding next episode because we only have uh, I think two more with the younger actresses. So uh, bye, bitch. Otto's out of here for now. Um, he will come back into play, unfortunately. And then, of course, the last scene, this is going to be the controversial one. We're not going to talk modern day shit. Do not, <laughs> please. But the maester comes in uh, and brings in Moon T. Uh, and so even though she told her dad the truth as far as her and Damon didn't do anything, she left out the part about uh, Kristen Cole and the maester. Either way, just in case, he sends her Moon T. And, of course, if you guys don't remember from Game of Thrones uh, being mentioned in the books, Moon T is essentially a plan B of Westeros. So, there you go. That was the episode. It got a little darker tonight, for sure. It got a little darker. Um, so, overall, again, pretty good. It's, it's getting there. Starting to pick up a little bit as far as, like, some of this, uh, the inner workings here, the, the political aspects of things. Um. Uh, essentially, yes, Count Ripula. Essentially, that's what it is. But uh, it is a thing uh, in Ice and Fire. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Raising Cajun, that is... Okay, I got that. was a break bones. Thank you again for that super chat. Lady Eternal, thank you for the super chat as well. Thank you for the 20. Break bones smiled at her last episode because she was a hot girl covered in blood striding through camp like I, I killed a boar. And does he need to have a relationship with her to find out entertaining treat? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't mean that, Lady Eternal. I, I think... It was just over overboard. Like I, I can imagine her look, him looking up, and because I would too, uh, I would think that was pretty cool. Um, I get that part of it. I'm saying it was just like over the top. Like it should have been more of a smirk, and he's back to business. But they kind of like they're throwing that at you, like uh, really focused on him for a while in that last episode. That's all I mean. I don't mean it's you know they have to have a relationship or whatever. Um. 
Uncle Lyant, so glad Otto is uh, piecing back to O10. Yes, he is a bastard, um, but of course, that doesn't mean the seeds aren't already planted. And you know how uh, Viserys is. Uh, he um, He's just wishy-washy as, as hell. Um, a, <laughs> JB, uh, a coal in the hole is worth a daemon in the <laughs> <laughs> the <Amen. laughs> Oh shit. Oh, it was, uh, sir. Pancake plan T. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a thing. Um, uh, me loose is what I, I immediately took a sip after talking about, uh, Oh, moon tea. Yeah, I did. I took a sip of sun drop after, uh, but I was done though. That was the last line, uh, in my notes. Loose's. Uh, Musi, Musi, hello, Musi, how you doing? Uh, Chris, Q&A, did you see my question? I did not, I'm sorry. I was just trying to finish that up. Um, did you see my question? Didn't, um, uh, I guess you mean Aegon V basically accused, oh, oh, King Viserys basically accused Otto of killing his dad. Um, nah, not necessarily, but using the opportunity is what he was saying, I think, yeah. Uh, I don't think he directly. If he, I think if he was mad enough, he he could have had him, you know, killed if he thought that. So I think uh, I think he was basically saying, "Look, I, you know, you use opportunities like this for your own gain, like you know." And so um, he's not he's not wrong. So I don't I don't think that he directly accused him. Um, Shelly, yeah, I'm surprised Shelly that we're not getting any mushroom. I don't it, at least a couple like a shot or two here and there could be. Uh, in King's Landing, it could be in Dragonstone later on. Uh, Rhaenyra actually should be um, in Dragonstone, I guess, for uh, or soon. Um, for a while, she's going to be hanging around court and all that, still still be in the air or whatever. She's sitting on the small council now, or at least sitting there, I think, this time. She was sitting there um, in the one little shot before. Um, I, don't, I, I guess that was the back. It was a real quick shot. I guess we saw the back of... Um, uh, of uh, Jason Lannister's head or something because he's there now uh, since the sea snake is uh, is gone temporarily. Um, Guild Acoustics Blake, thank you, man, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Um, so uh, what did you guys think uh, overall? I don't know. It was a little darker. Uh, I love my favorite part was probably the juxtaposition between. Renera running out, having a, a night of freedom without, you know, really, it didn't really matter who she was, hiding her, you know, appearance, obviously, with Damon, him letting, you know, he's got, it's good insight. I mean, I think it is good insight as, as an heir. Um, also, he's, you know, you know, you could argue he's using it to, uh, to get to her and emotionally and, you know, so he can be basically king regent someday. Um, but I think it was cool for her to see the how the common folk just live their lives out there. And, uh, and it's not just about, um, the lords and ladies, so gave her a different perspective. So I was saying earlier in the episode, she was coming off as kind of bratty. She has been a little more bratty, uh, but maybe that gives her a new perspective, especially now all this stuff happening and she actually broke down and uh, got to see real people in the real world for a night and then um, got all hot and bothered and went back and um, make made the man break his vows, man. Uh, he chose to do it, but, I mean, she didn't make it easy. Um Let's see. Uh, uh, someone really liked the tone of the episode. Thought it was great overall. Yeah, it was a little bit of a darker. Tone. Yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, definitely, definitely a um, darker tone uh, as as things start to kind of crumble. Uh, Greenleaf, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Put on the wig. I don't. I could grab the wig. I mean, I could grab it if you really want me to grab the wig. I can grab the wig. Um. Uh, J JB, yes. Uh, plus, she finally got laid, so she should make her cool for a few weeks. Yeah, maybe that <laughs> ease the tension for for a little while. That is true. Um, because I like Renera, I do. I really like Millie Alcock Planner. I like Renera, obviously. Um, but they're the way they're changing things in the show. You have to be. You have. You feel for Allison. You do feel for her uh, to some degree. Um, so. Anyway, so there, it, it's a difference from the books and the show. Um, but again, it's it's considered separate canon or whatever. Uh, Nicole, no, I'm no, I was obviously he did, yeah. I mean he he willingly willingly took off his shit and he just thought about it for a second. He just looked at his cloak for a second, and was like, yeah, I swore this oath thing, but uh, yeah. 
Uh, K-Dubs, I heard people from Rowan County in North Carolina are a lot like Flea Bottom folk. Uh, uh, yeah, that's not necessarily untrue. Not necessarily untrue. Um, D4, really liked how Amelia used, uh, conveyed her desires on Sir Kristen without using any words. Yeah, that was really good. Uh, she, she's killing it. I mean, she really is. Um, I like her as, uh, as Renera, for sure. Um, uh, let's see. What was, oh, Scott of Cassidy Rock. Uh, it's getting a little more modern day politics. I'm worried it's going to get worse. Uh, they are making it a little bit heavier with that for sure. I mean, you can you can just see it the way they um, – the, some of the lines and they're, they're really stating, uh, really making it pretty obvious that they're really focusing on, you know, um, uh, men have it great, women have it horrible, and you're just like a birthing machine type thing, which, you know, to some degree was, was true for sure. Um, but then – Let's see that with the regular common folk and see how, you know, easy men have it too. So, let, you know, so that you could tell they're, they're definitely highlighting that stuff for sure, which is, um, you know, it is what the story's about though. So I don't think it's any kind of um, uh, anything unnecessary because obviously that's the, the core of the story anyway, even from the book's uh, standpoint. But you can see them because um, you just don't get the details like that from the books. Um, let's see. Um. Uh. Yeah, Patrick. Yeah, exactly. Uh. I, I, we. I think that was last week. Was that last week they announced that? Um. So Sapochnik is gone. Uh, he did this show. You like you said for three years. Directed three episodes this season, I believe. Right, and I believe that he just said. I. I remember an interview. He said that he's not going to ever do another Game of Thrones. So he just don't want to spend another decade or, or 12 years, you know, doing this thing. So I, I, I don't blame him. So I think he kind of, you know, made sure it was off to a good start and whatever. So that doesn't mean he can't come back, though, and direct some episodes. See, I, I would imagine he would probably do that for sure. Um, uh, JB, okay, old man, about to be yelling at the clouds, so I'm out. Fight the good fight. Night's watch. Uh, all right, JB, have a good one. Old man, about to be yelling at the clouds. <laughs> what? Uh, all right, man, have a good one. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, all right, all right, Greenleaf, I'll get the wig. Okay, I'll get the damn wig. Let me, let me, I think it's right over here in this closet. Give me one second. Hold on, hold on. Hold on one second. Okay, okay. Here's the Geralt of Talladega that I forgot to put on earlier. Well, can I do this with uh can I do this with <laughs> She says you're trying to pay me uh pay me to put it on. We got <laughs> we got our dame in here. There we go. This is what I meant to do in season 1. I mean, episode 1, not season 1. No, no, I just no, 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 no. extra $2. No, no, no. I just I just felt like it was going to keep going. Um, so anyway, we have the girl of Talladega. Uh, we could do the we could do the hat too. Oh, so halt! Thank you, K Dub. Thank you, man. Thank you. Ooh, ooh. Um, your blinds are out and cars are driving. <laughs> uh, real hell, the king. Oh shit! Here we go. Here we go. Giga T. Giga T. Um. Anyway. <clears throat> Um, Jasmine, uh, yes, uh, no, Rid Riddick is good. Uh, he's, he's, he's through surgery. He's recovering. He's doing good. He's trying to play every day and I'm trying to keep him calm. I uh, still got some bleeds, but they're definitely not as bad. So, uh, at least so far and I pray it doesn't get any worse. Um, so you keep me, I still, I, I'm looking over here, but he's right outside the door. So Cannon's here as well. Um, uncle, <laughs> uncle, <laughs> yeah. did I join kit? No, I used to wear this on Twitch when I would play, um, Witcher, The Witcher Three. So this was uh, this was the Geralt of Talladega as uh, as Neff, uh, Dark Side Droids name me Geralt of Talladega. So we had a name uh, something or well, we, I can't even remember what it was. Something about Damon. We had a redneck nickname for the Targaryen thing. Um, Chris Targaryen. Yeah, Bandersnatch. I can't remember what it was. It wasn't just Chris. Chris Targaryen, first of his name. I can't remember. 
We had we had a good I can't remember what it was. Somebody have to remind me. Come up with something cool. Your grace, <laughs> Sammy. <laughs> thank you, Noby. Thank you. Um Cat King, our new Tar King. Yes, bend the knee. Bend the knee to the <laughs> Uh, I don't see how dudes wear long hair. Um, anyway, uh, Greenleaf again. Thank you for the super chat again. Uh, thank you. Now it looks like exactly like Viserys the first. I guess is I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Um, I look like I kind of do look like Patty, don't I? Patty Constantine. I guess I do, man. Damn. Uh, Matthew Style, thank you for the super chat. Matthew Styles uh, for the 10. Appreciate it. I love the scale of the show. Seeing people come in uh, for court from the stairs, the passageways, all these touches to the realism uh, we didn't see. It's very true, Matthew. We were talking about that before. Um, uh, we just we just saw like the building, and then we go to a room. And so now they're showing a little more of like hallways. And you were getting a little bit less of that as we move on because it is a huge set. But we do see, uh, I think it's cool how we can see some other parts. It just looks more alive and real. There's a lot of things like when we were watching Game of Thrones, right? We did not think, we did not think that a TV show could look any better, and this show looks better. There's something, of, and there's something HBO just does right. There's a feel to it that's um, just, just, just better than anything. Like <clears throat> Lord of the Rings, I've watched the three, the three episodes of Lord of the Rings. I do want to actually talk about that later, but not in this stream. I don't want to get off on Lord of the Rings. Uh, we did a little bit last week, but it looks good most in most places. But there's still not a, I don't know, it's like a grit about it that HBO does. I don't know how they're doing it. Probably the same damn camera, but it's the cinematography, it's the feel, it's the grit. Maybe it's a little bit darker, whatever it may be, but there's something that's really just spot on about the God world. Um, Kyle Tar Targaryen. <laughs> <laughs> Targaryen uh, Aryan I guess <coughs> oh shit LeVar uh, His Majesty King Shine of the Hollers <laughs> thank you that's, that's not bad LeVar actually uh, King Shine of them Hollers hell yeah um, <laughs> oh shit uh, Patty. He, oh, does Patty have arm tats? Does he? That's right. He does in real life. That's right. I've seen. I've seen his tattoo. I don't know what they are, but I remember them. Chris Target first of the name protected the realm is sponsored by Mountain Dew. Uh, Sun Drop Ben. Sun Drop. Okay, got to get that right. Sun Drop. <laughs> Danny Blackfire. There you go. Dark side. Something along those lines. Uh, Timmy. Timmy Blackfire. Um. Anyway, <laughs> we're gonna have some more characters. Um, Randy Suimatsu, Chris Tarhillian, uh, yeah, the Tarhillian. Um, Gregor looking like 1776. Sith dog, wave three fingers. What? 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 What, what does that mean? Um, Murato dialogue is is bad and ring. Yeah, some of it is. It, some of it is bad. Um, it, we won't get into all that, but there is some definite issues. There's something. It's not as horrible as people say. And we won't get into all that. We're 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 on we're on House of Dragon. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Becky, mother, <laughs> that's one country ass tar, country ass Targaryens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh shit. Yeah. Before somebody says, I'm, you know, hey, look, we had the wig. How many years ago when we started doing the wig? On Twitch, years and years ago. Uh, the African sci-fi scholar, thank you for the super chat. Uh, appreciate it, man. Did the Blackwood kid kill a Baratheon? Seems like the conflict resolution sucks back then. One uh, insult you could be dead, not easy men. Not easy for men in that aspect. Well, it's, it's true. It's the same for today, actually. Um, people don't want to talk about that. But, yeah, no, I think he, he killed a, um, a Bracken. Uh, I didn't exactly. I mean, that's who was started. That's who they was. He pulled the sword on. So that was the shout out I was talking about earlier with the uh, Brackens. So the Blackwoods and Brackens have a long history of fighting and hating each other. Um, I talked about it in videos before in the past for Game of Thrones and um, the, within the the Blackwoods have the 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 weirwood tree, the black weirwood tree with the ravens around it. That's their sigil, and there's an, there's an issue there with a uh, with the tree. Um, but that was a cool little shout out. So he killed a Bracken. Um, I believe that's who I saw him actually stab. I mean, unless he was stabbing somebody else trying to break up the fight, but that was a little shout out to game of Thrones. 
uh, or Song of, Song of Ice and Fire specifically. Uh, Greenleaf, absolutely. Uh, thank you for the super chat again. Thank you for uh, absolutely is a compliment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. Lady Eternal. Um, there it is. Uh, thank you, Lady Eternal, for the super chat again. This is the second time Damon hasn't tried to defend himself against false uh, asperious accusations made by his brother. One of why he decided it wasn't worth doing so, sending Ricky to, uh, Ricky to Riddick and help uh, him heal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, we, we said that earlier. He's, he's damn sure, uh, like Mizuma said, it's a way to um, even uh, kind of passively, aggressively uh, aggravate him and even more because he doesn't even deny it. And he's not, so he still makes him unsure. And that's the second time he's done that. I think that's a pretty cool little character quirk for him. Um, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. He just lets it stand. And then he just like asks for a hand in marriage, even though he didn't actually do anything. Which of course just reinforces that he did, um, but he finds out obviously later that he didn't. So anyway, um, let's see. Uh, Betray King, uh, what's up with the mud sigil sur uh, surfacing in Renera's line of proposals? Extinct? No, uh, I didn't pay. I didn't see anything, but I was I was only paying attention to the uh, the Blackwood Bracken thing. I didn't really look. I'll I would do that in my rewatch and and uh, in detail breakdown, but I didn't see any other sigils, so uh, I'm not sure um, who was there. I did. I just immediately noticed. Obviously, you know, we're talking about Boros sitting in Storm's End. And then obviously uh, the um, <clears throat> the Blackwoods and Brackens, which I thought was a pretty cool shout. So I'll, I'll, when I watch it again, I'll pause it and and see who's in there. Um, uh, Alex uh, is the White Worm Damon's whore. Uh, yeah, I mean was uh, essentially yes. Um, the White Worm that's uh, Masaria, uh, Lady Misery. She's got many names, and this is already bugging the shit out of me. Um, yeah, so that's her, and I, I really actually like that the way they did it because they did it in a sense of she went in these last two years from the last episode um, to <laughs> um, selling information instead of her body. I thought that was a good touch. That will that's a good little setup for later, I'll, and that's all I'll say. Um, but I thought it was pretty damn good to throw that in there. Uh, Jake, I'm jealous of Sir Cole. Mm, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sammy, the Bracken fall down and go boom. Yes, the little boy had some pent up rage. That guy chose the wrong one. Yeah, he chose violence today. Uh, he sure did. I mean, we were they were making fun of like the Renera was like, okay, we got this old man. Now we got this child. He pulls his damn sword out and fucking proves it. And I don't know. We, we didn't obviously see the fight or whatever, but he ends up just killing him. That's the thing I will say right there. Um. I don't think Boris Baratheon, he did say put it, put up your steel and he didn't get there in time, but they, he did not want them to fight in his hall. He actually does this in the books, but not under that circumstance, a little bit different. I won't say anything. He would have allowed that. And I don't like when I think back to episode one, the tournament, um, they would have never let just people kill each other for the sh sake of killing each other in a tournament. Uh, it, just, it, it was just for the sake of, the violence to do the juxtaposition with the birth and all that stuff. It was, it's a friendly thing. People can get mad, but they're not going to let just people kill each other. You're talking about these houses would start going to war. If you just killed somebody's brother or whatever in a joust, because you got pissed off and lost, you're talking about wars breaking out. So I, I think that was, you know, thinking back, I didn't say that the first episode, but those little things bug me a little bit because it's, it's not realistic to me. Um, uh, Graham Willis. Anyone notice that Renera dressed up as a boy is John Mulaney? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I did not. But they did make a point of a couple people calling her boy for sure. And then she said something to Damon like he called me boy, um, which I guess is part of the little theme there. You know, she became a boy for the night and she was free or whatever. I guess I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, Mother of Dragon, my son's outdoor school name is Dragon. That was 25 years ago. His friends still call me Mother of Dragon. Uh, very cool, Taryn. I don't know if I knew that. I don't know if you've told me the reason you were called Mother of Dragon on YouTube. Very cool. Um, Meg Paul, I have a hard time imagining that Otto is the prankster on set. Then remember, he's in the guy from The Replacements. 
Uh, is he though? Is he? Is, he seems like he's not really acting that much. I don't know. The, I don't know him at all. But it, it doesn't seem like he's doing that much acting. Just saying. Uh, he's playing a good auto for sure. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see here. Make sure I didn't miss any. Thing, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Sith Dog Damon does know the castle. Yes, he does. I thought that was pretty cool, man. I thought that was a cool little thing to throw in there. Uh, he, you know, using the the passageways of, that Magor had built. I mean, they're they're throwing in a lot of history. Obviously, they didn't mention who built them or whatever. Um, it, they could have shown like the note without you know showing without telling and all that kind of stuff. If like you, if we get a, got a shot of the note, maybe it says you know Magor had these things built. Look over here behind your bed. You know the little map she had. I thought that uh, maybe maybe that's on there. I don't know. I didn't pause it. This you know I'll do that later. But um, I thought that was pretty cool. And then that obviously makes you think about Tyrion uh, knowing all of them and then Varys in the books from the current um, Ice and Fire storyline. <clears throat> yeah, Jason, wait, you are no conqueror. They're doing a lot of little shouts to uh, to, to Aegon. Um, Eric, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool there. Uh, they're really kind of pushing the prophecy. And, and, I, and again, it's not going to play out in this series, obviously. Um but it makes you start to question things about the current story with Rhaegar. What did he know? What did he read? Um, so now we know that there's a message on it when he heated up. That was a pretty cool little addition. And he and she was in Valyrian, obviously. Um, pretty cool little uh, addition there that's um, not from books and stuff, obviously. The cat's ball. A few things have been retconned. Let's just say that for sure. Which is fine. I mean, George R. R. Martin can, can change when he wants. John Snow rules. There he is. Uh, Smoke screen. Did you catch the rats? Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I, I wrote that. That was one thing I missed. I, I mean, I wrote it down, but I didn't say it. Where was it, Ed, in my thing? Hold on. Um, oh, yeah. So, Renera stole. She, like, did, did she grab a rat and steal it and run? Didn't pay for it? It's like, damn, she just stole a rat from the dude. I mean, these people were trying to make a living. <laughs> uh, Doc. Yeah, those are the things, Doc. You're right. You're right, Doc. Um, it does bug me like that, those things, because when you get older, look, when you get older, you just notice shit like this, and you become a little more, I don't know, you start calling it out a little more, but yeah, who keeps the torches in the secret tunnels lit exactly? So, you know, you open the wall up, it should be pitch black, and she needs to grab something herself and, and whatever, but there's already lights. I understand what she got down to the bottom where the dragon skull is or whatever, Kind of a shout out to Arya there because she did the same thing. You know, ended up hiding in that school, I guess. There, but you're right. There's little things like that. It's like, yeah, they don't. But you know, again, suspension of disbelief. It's a, uh, a fantasy story, I suppose. But yeah, how does she? <laughs> how does she know where to go? Um, African scholar again. Thank you for the super chat again. Uh, appreciate it. Seemed like this episode went by too fast, which was interesting in comparison to Rings of Power, which seems like it's three hours long. Do you think HBO and Amazon meant to go head to head like this? Uh, I actually said they would not. I, I was actually surprised when they announced um, uh, the time. I thought uh, I didn't know they would over. I thought for sure they would um, start it right after uh, Rings of Power, right after. Um, but um, Amazon's doing it, so they put it out. Uh, they're not competing at all with House of the Dragon. Um, when you break down the numbers, and I, I've looked at a couple of things about it, they're not even close. But um, yeah, it's um, it's interesting they did that. I've actually predicted that they would, would not because you, especially on the first season of something, um, we know House of the Dragon is going to have a built-in audience. Um, Lord of the Rings taking a big risk doing that, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that was a good idea. I think they should have waited. Um, twelve seconds on my. Rings of Power Clock. Okay, thank you, Meg. Thank you. I'm done. I'm done. Um, uh, Murato, Damon was waiting for her, right? He did it. Uh, if you if you mean did it as in the thing, no, he did. He didn't. He started it, but didn't didn't do anything and left her hanging and just to fuck with her head. And that's when she went back to the Red Keep and uh, pulled in uh, Sir Kristen Cole. 
it's going to be really interesting to see the reactions to the changes coming for some of these characters. It's going to be really good, man. Um, Jason North, uh, Jason Weeks, Warden of the North, thank you for becoming a channel member. And somebody else did earlier. I'm so sorry I missed it. I saw it and forgot to say something. Somebody else joined the channel earlier. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't miss it. Oh, yeah, no, Josh. I did, uh, Josh Novosad. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh and Jason, for becoming channel members. Really helps a lot. Uh, all that is for people wondering, you join, and it's like four ninety nine a month. You can pick as the lowest. You can pick different levels or whatever. And uh, you get the uh, unlocks the emojis. And we'll, the more members we get, the more emojis I can do. So you have all these emojis. It supports the channel uh, with a monthly thing for five bucks. And then you get the badges beside your name and all that stuff in Super Chats. Uh, I mean, in, uh, in comments on uh, videos and live streams. And then we can do like uh, member only stuff too. So thank you. Um, where did that go? I keep seeing references to Jay is bored, but I don't see Jay is bored. Oh, there's Jay is bored. Rings of power is hot garbage. Uh, it's not, I don't think it's as bad as people think. Um, as say I don't like Galadriel. Galadriel at all. <clears throat> I don't like her. She's almost insufferable in some scenes. It's like why is she acting like an asshole to everybody? Um, but if you can kind of get past that, it's not. It's not, I mean, I do understand things they that are breaking canon. Believe me, I recognize it. Um, but I understand they can't say some of those things too because of rights. So anyway, sorry, sorry. Uh, Meg's going to yell at me. Um, let's see. Uh, Musi, no, that's a good point, Musi. Uh, we're implying that Damon lit the torches. Yeah, I guess that is true. He did sneak in there. I didn't even think about that. There you go, Doc. That makes sense, Doc, don't it? If Damon put the bag in there of the clothes and the map, he probably he came in through there. He probably lit them. So that is true. I didn't even, even think about it. I didn't even think about it. Uh, Captain Photon, there you go, with the um, with the sigils there as a channel member. Thank you, Captain Photon. Um, uh, Kusher, what are you asking someone, please? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry I've missed some stuff I know. Um... Uh, James uh, Clow, was it not Damon that was struggling with getting it up more than anything? Remember that happened in episode one? I don't know, actually. I think I didn't take it that way. I think it was just more of a fucking with her, getting in her head a little bit, making her, you know, crave it type of thing. I didn't take it as an issue like the first episode. I didn't take it that way. Maybe I'm wrong. Again, I was... Remember, I'm scribbling down notes the first uh, watch and everything, so I could be I could be completely wrong. If someone you know caught that for sure, let me know. But I don't think I, I don't I didn't take it that way. Um, underground news: No Rangers are doing in Lord of the Rings is boring. Uh, yeah, a lot of people think so. That's uh, it's for sure. There's there's definitely lots of uh, in interesting opinions, um, but everybody can have an opinion. Um, Hold on, let me scroll down. I'm losing this thing here. Um, Jan, thank you for the super chat, Jan. Uh, love the episode, Steamy, some aggressive cuddling action. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, yes, it was. Yes, it was. Uh, <clears throat> I need to, I need to watch that scene again, the Chris and Cole scene. I didn't see if they actually showed anything. Um, like they would in Game of Thrones. I don't think they're doing as much for sure for um for Game of Thrones. Uh, like they did Game of Thrones. They're dialing that back. So I know we got a shot from, from like behind the little uh, like I don't know what do you call it through the the wall thing. Um, but yes, it was it was. Uh, so I think they're dialing back a lot of the gratuitous uh, Game of Thrones sex scenes for sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Jan. Um, love ag ag aggressive cuddling. <laughs> Absolutely love aggressive cuddling. Um, <laughs> uh, it's Jay, everybody enjoys a little struggle snuggle. <laughs> struggle snuggle. Yes, there's a good way to put it. Struggle snuggle. We call it aggressive cuddling. Um, Randy Sumaster, Damon needs Maester by Chris Hill. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. He's got a lot going on in his head, too, I guess. I don't know. I didn't catch. I didn't take it that way, though, Randy. I mean, maybe y'all did. I, I didn't. I thought, I took it as him um, just fucking with her. Um, <coughs> uh, 
let's see. Kusher, I wish they gave him more TV time. Uh, you mean Damon? Uh, I'm trying to find. Hold on, Kusher. I'm trying to find. You were saying he is important. I don't know who you said. Uh, is he in the book? Yeah, Karen. Uh, Karen, um, I, I think he's impotent. I think he was emotional issues in the first episode. Also, he was just fucking with her. Yeah, I, that's the totally way I took it um, to get in her head. Um, Nat, what? I'm obsessing over my hair. No, yeah, I mean, it It, it, <clears throat> it itches, you know. It itches my, my face. I can put it over and cover one eye. I'll be cool. Uh, I don't like that Damon cut his hair, man. I, I will say that. Just, just saying. I don't like the short hair Targaryen thing. I mean, look, you just keep your long hair, man. Uh, anyway, sorry, this is um, so. Kusher, I'm sorry, I, I'm not sure exactly. I think you're talking about Damon, but I'm not exactly sure. Chris Targ Nation, Murado, there you go. Uh, John, so short hair Damon looked better. I don't know. I think I like him with his longer hair when it's at least like uh, slick back, like in the throne room scene. I thought that was more Damon. Uh, oh, Kusher, the boy, you're talking about the spy. Um, is that who you mean? I think we got the gist of what we needed from him. If that's, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, I think we, we saw him follow. Um, uh, Meg Paul, did Masaria know that Damon was going to take Rhaenyra to the brothel so the kid could be there? Um, I don't know if if she knew um, anything about the brothel in particular because that could be just random. But I think she had Damon tailed. I think she had, um, she, you know, she uh, she was pissed off at him last time. So I think she has, Otto has hired her essentially to watch Damon. And it just so happens that um, he got uh, Renera involved. So that, that's the way I took it. <clears throat> Uh, Lori Perkins, don't blame her for Sir Cole. He is very sexy. Yeah, I mean, I guess um, he is considered a, a, a sexy dude. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how you feel about him later. We'll see. Uh, this is that's what's gonna be interesting to me because a lot of these characters are gonna be like you know you like him now, you hate him later, you hate him now, love him. Later. I mean, this gonna. I'm I'm curious to see what happens. But again, they are putting a little bit more nuance in the show which I do appreciate. Um, the book, again, is not detailed as far as it's just rumored, but now at least for the show, we know that she did, in fact, um, go after him. He did not turn her down and uh, broke his vows. So, <laughs> Jake, at least you have to go for sloppy seconds. Yeah, I was wondering for a minute because I thought at first, before he just kind of randomly took all, I thought that they were already like going at it in the brothel of Damon, but I... I I, I assumed after that that never actually, never actually happened. Um, uh, Maria Noel, honestly, Cole is fine, but can we talk about Corliss? Uh, now that is one fine specimen of a man. Oh, Maria likes Corliss Valarion. Uh, yeah, no, he uh, he looks cool, man. He does look cool in the role. Uh, he wasn't even in this episode, but he played a big role because. That was a thing too. Him trying to marry Lena to the Sea Lord and Bravos is a lot of pressure. So that makes uh, basically them turn around and um, force Renera to marry uh, <clears throat> Lenor. Uh, Bandersnatch Q and A. Do you reckon Reyna shows her dad how much she's grown politically by agreeing to marrying Lenor, but asking him to be rid of Otto? I think so. Yeah, no, I do. I do think so. I think that's a cal- that was a good move actually. Um, she, uh, I think that, I think that's why he agreed to it. Honestly, I think he, after he sat there and thought about it, um, after she said, you didn't bother to ask me what happened. Uh, and he did deny it at first, obviously he was defending her. So, I, you know, good, good on him. But I think that would absolutely show her, uh, maturity in that sense. Cause now since the show started, we've seen her hang around the council for four years and, and, and all the politics. So she's learned a lot, obviously. Uh, yeah, Steve Toussaint. Yes, uh, Bandersnatch uh, and Maria. Steve Toussaint is the man you're after. Uh, yeah, he's doing he's doing great. Um, Musi, I love the sea snake, but Lenor is hot AF. Okay, now we're talking about all the hot dudes up in House of the Dragon. 
Um, I did. Hey, look, I like Lane Orr. I said it last week. It was one of my favorite moments of Lane Orr, and, and not just him riding Sea Smoke, but uh, the, he, I think the actor, just the, the couple lines he had was good. I like that character already. Um, Sammy, tr- let me try to dye my husband dreads <laughs> dark and blonde as he sleeps. There you go. That would be fun. Try it. Go ahead. Go for it, man. Um, Jon Snow, the Viserys and Allison scene disturbed you. Yeah, it was supposed to be disturbing. And that's what I mean. They're changing things to that degree. Like, she's just laying there, like, doing her duty. And, you know, I get it. I get it. But we don't have to push it every single scene because she's not like that. And, I mean, you know, in the books, they care for each other. Um, They actually do, which was kind of the point. Um, I'm not saying it necessarily started out that way, but you know, uh, it was it was for the Renera slash you know Freedom Night thing. I'm a boy now type thing. Um, yeah, Jake with Sarah's body rotting. I don't know why they're going with the body rot thing. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, it's. I mean, diabetes is, is like, I'm, I'm guessing what they're, uh, if, if it's the actual rotting or where their or if wounds are not healing, I should say. But the, if you notice, he's already lost two fingers. That's book accurate as well. They did fuck up, apparently, the last episode. We saw the tape that got passed around the internet. So they are fixing that, apparently, in the, um, for replays or whatever. <clears throat> um, K Dubs now she is just uh, health cares for him, yeah. Pretty much, uh, that's kind of the the idea is like uh, he's now old and getting decrepit. Although he didn't look that way, you know, pulling the knife on Damon, but that's what they're playing up at least. Like she's, but I thought I took it K Dubs as before she was younger and she was like, okay, I'm getting married to the king because my dad wants me to, and you know, she knew what was going on but went with it. Not much of a choice, I guess, but I took it as her like actually accepting the role when he actually gave her when she started like scrubbing him and told the the handlers to get out of the room. That's the way I took it. But then they showed the scene of the it was uncomfortable where she's just kind of laying there and has to pretend to smile. And I don't I didn't like that. I, I thought it was unnecessary. Um, you know, again, it's just she's just different in the books, and it's fine. I mean, I get it. it's TV. They're really trying to push the whole. Um, women in Westeros thing, which which is fine again, but it doesn't have to be every scene where like it, it made you feel like Viserys is taking advantage of her. And, uh, you know, I mean, they're married and they actually, it wasn't just a political thing, um, for him or her. So that's where they're changing some things or it seems to be. I mean, he admits it later. They talk about it. So I don't know why they did it there. I guess it was just, maybe she's tired of it, I guess, after three years, four years. Uh, Charles Wilson Otto sent the moon, moon tea. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Otto. I don't think Otto would want to send the moon tea. Uh, he want, I mean, Viserys is right. He wants uh, Rhaenyra to look bad, so the king will name Aegon the heir. Or, you know, that's the whole point. It wouldn't serve Otto for her to look good or be safe from rumors. I mean, that's why he, you know, spilled the beans anyway. Um, Michael Murtig, I, uh, did the King die from a sickness in the books? Um, I won't go into any details just to see how they change it. Uh, but he will not be around the whole show. And I won't say when I think it's going to, I know in my mind when I think it's going, things are going to happen. Um, but yes, at some point he will be gone. I mean, look, it's it's obviously a minor spoiler. Spoiler alert, everybody in this show is going to be gone, uh, you know, at some point. So, uh, obviously, it's in the past. Uh, <laughs> Becky, this itch, that itchy wig is going to give him a serious rat. It might. It might. Um, it's, it's fine. It's not bad. <laughs> oh, shit. Um Did we see Carol Brown up in here, by the way? I didn't see Carol. I know she was a little behind. She was live tweeting. I was liking some of her tweets, but I was trying to take notes. I didn't see her coming here tonight. I was just curious. I know she was a little behind, so, but not far, just based off her tweets. 
<laughs> Charles Wilson, he don't want a dragon child. Um, well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. If she was, um, quote unquote, soiled and ended up pregnant, unmarried, that would help his case is all I'm saying. Um, Jason Weeks, the maester sent the moon tea and it ain't, and it ain't moon tea. Uh, what do you think it is, Jason? If you don't think it's moon tea, um, because there is that, look, there's a couple of things about the Maester conspiracy, right? But the other things, uh, working with the high towers, but other things don't um, fit either uh, with uh, like Otto, for example. There's things that he's doing that would actually help the Targaryens as opposed to killing them off in dragons. So there's some, a little bit of, there's hints there, but uh, it doesn't completely line up. So, um, uh, uh, Bandersnatch, yeah, exactly. Um, the I reckon the scenes of Allison Renera having uh, sex was two sides of the same coin for a woman. Allison wasn't happy about Renera. Well, yeah, that's and you heard that's, that's exactly what they said. It's what Damon rumor told her, and the brothel was look, look, this is for pleasure, and men or women like it just as just as good as men. When she saw it done out of ple for pleasure's sake and not for like uh, being a baby machine for heirs, I think was the idea. So yeah, absolutely. Um, Bandersnatch, we need to get you some decent dr uh, dreads, I guess you're saying, wigs. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, hell, I'd wear it. I think it'd be cool. I, I, maybe I need to just grow my hair out. I just need to grow my hair out and get dreads. How about it? <clears throat> uh, John Ware Jr., yeah, it was moon tea. Yes, exactly. Morning after tea, I guess you could call it. We were calling it Plan B or Plan T. But yeah, moon tea is definitely a thing, and ice and fire to um, uh, to uh, get rid of any unwanted pregnancy. Um, Jason Weeks, tears of no, no, not tears of least. She's not. He don't. He wouldn't want to. Uh, that would be. Um, I don't know if it'd be obvious, but she she would. He wouldn't want to um, kill her at, at this point. Um, so yeah, that would be uh, pretty pretty obvious, probably. Um, the never wake up tea. Uh, I don't I don't think so. Honey barbecue wings. The wig is on par with the ones in the show. I know this is like a a plastic cheap pla like it's all like stringy plastic um, from like the party shop when I was doing the Game of Thrones. Uh, had rednecks series this is what i was using for john snow i mean not john snow um for uh what's his name damn it i'm having a brain fart hell yeah ned's right hand man uh sir uh what's his name sir beard i remember i was tying it i was like tying the thing i was tying the thing down here i'm, I'm having a brain fart I forget his name that's how long it's been i was tying it down here like anyway <sighs> Um, <laughs> for sure, chicken and Jill so as to get the moon tea to Damon to fix his short stroke. That was it was really short stroke. <laughs> oh shit! How a mighty um. Wait a minute. What is? Okay, I think Carol was Carol's still live to it. I think she's behind. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry, Voodoo. Thank you, Voodoo, darling. Way more Royce. No, no, no. Way, not way more. <laughs> but yes, sir. Yes, Royce. Way more. Um, Doc Holliday, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it, man. Uh, any chance for next episode of Trailer Breakdown tonight? Yes. Uh, also for no picture. I'll also fail. Oh God, man! Look, man, I was I was I was in a rush, man. I felt like the episode. I was a little, I was like five minutes behind, and I felt like that was forever. So I thought the episode was like an hour, and I guess it was an hour five or six minutes. But I thought it was like an hour fifteen. So I was trying to, you know, make it on time. Doc Holiday with the two fails. I'm sorry. I guess it's too late now. Uh, thank you for the super chat. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we'll pull it up in a, in a second. 
I'm going to grab some cold water uh, so Natalie won't be mad at me. Um, <clears throat> yes, thank you, IFP. The, yes, Sir Roderick Castle, the master at arms of Winterfell. That's what I was using this one for. I don't think I use it for anybody else. <clears throat> Excuse me, bit, <clears throat> my lady. <laughs> I, I know a lot of you hadn't even seen those old videos, but those were fun. Um, Sir Roderick. That was a bad death, Theon. Patrick, uh, lest the princess uh, finds a husband quick, she has to take the tea. Well, maybe. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, this is not um not a book thing where that's a problem yet anyway. So we'll, we'll see. I guess uh, I guess it won't matter either way. Uh all right, Nat. I'm I'm going. I'm going. Uh, let me check something really quick. Um, uh, African scholar, by the way, on your last super chat, I wanted to mention this too. You said that episode seemed like it went by too fast. I was actually, it was actually the opposite for me. I thought this one went by slower tonight. It just felt that way, and it may be because I'm in a rush to get up here and start the music and stream on time and everything maybe but uh the the lord of the rings has felt fairly quick to me um n not everyone but uh, maybe it was just tonight i don't know um speaking of african scholar african scholar thank you for the five super chat is the cat's paw dagger unofficially lightbringer now no um lightbringer is not still not a, a physical sword uh lightbringer is john uh now again don't go by the show for all the official uh, ending stuff. I mean, obviously the big beats, like I've always said, will still be there. But John is Lightbringer. It's still him. He is the Song of Ice and Fire. Same thing, in my opinion. Um, so it's not a physical weapon. I don't think it's Dawn or any of that stuff. So that's always been my opinion. Is people are reading too much in the prophecy. Um, Dark Angel, why wouldn't Viserys allow Rhaenyra to marry Damon? Because he despises Damon in the sense that he knows, he, he thinks it's all about the throne for him. He does want to get close to the throne, but he actually does care for Rhaenyra and always has, and that's what Viserys doesn't understand about Damon. This is why he doesn't deny things. He just lets him stew on and think he's guilty, and then he finds out later he's not necessarily. So he he wouldn't, even if it would be a good match for, for let's say, uh, Rhaenyra would be happy about it, uh, she, he still wouldn't do it despite Damon. So it's only about Damon being the king regent. That's all. In that moment, at least. Uh, Nicole, I'll post a new wig options on Discord in general vote on which you prefer, and I'll make uh, sure we get a replacement. Uh-oh, we got a Discord vote for a wig. Uh, Lady Eternal, thank you. I appreciate it um, for the super chat again. Thank you, Lady Eternal. Appreciate the super chats tonight. Uh, it would take a couple hundred uh, in super chats to go through all the ways to House of Dragon book and show us Sarah's to be a um, actual predator. Allison wasn't given a choice for uh, about marrying him, and her feelings are in front uh, are a front for self preservation. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, you could say that too. Uh, all I'm saying is um, they're changing her in the sense of being um, power hungry as well, and using that like a, like a Cersei, uh, if you if you catch my meaning. She you know she's more like Cersei later, I would say. Comparable. Um, you can just see the you can see the difference. Even though we don't have again again we don't have all the details in the books, and we never will. So. Um, they did say, and George R. R. Martin did say himself, show canon is just just different canon. So we can't we can't make that uh, fit to the book necessarily. It'll always be a little vague. But we will get uh, Blood and Fire, which I believe is going to be the name of Volume Two. But of course, that's not this time period. So, um. Voodoo, I think this is the reason why Damon didn't struggle snuggle <laughs> the princess he cares for. He does. I think he really does. He does. He, he cares for his brother. That's Damon's, that's the misunderstanding about him being dark and light and a bad boy and all that stuff is he does care for his brother. He just wants to be appreciated by his brother. He does care for Rhaenyra. Um, It doesn't hurt. He felt hurt about the whole thing about uh, the air being the air. And yes, he would certainly like to sit there. 
Um, but it's not his primary motivation, and I think that's the big misunderstanding about Damon, for sure. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, African Sci-Fi again. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, again, uh, it's strange to me how characters are C inbreeding and line breeding is strange when they have been doing it for generations. Yeah, it is. I mean, I mean, I, th I don't think um, they really... It was it was odd when Basira said that. I mean, I don't think um, for the most part they do. I think it just it was odd. Basira said, and she's your you know niece, and it's like, yeah, and I mean, your wife was half Targaryen, right? Ama Aaron was half Targaryen. I mean, the, 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 so I I don't know why that was thrown in there other than to make it awkward, which shouldn't be for that family at all. I don't know. It's it was a little odd for sure. Um, Meg Paul, he cares and counsels Renera and Viserys. Can't wait to see how pissy he is when Renera weds Lane over. Yeah, and then he's going. Well, I don't want to say, I don't want to spoil anything, Meg. You know what I'm talking about, probably. I assume. Um, but yeah, we still have. Uh, there is a another person out there still that uh could be married, and that's probably what's going to um that's going to lead to some discussions. Uh, in late season one, I believe, about uh, some some things that are coming up. Is things are getting dicey um, already? So, all right. Uh, if you'll give me a minute or two, uh, if you guys want to hang around, we'll, we'll pull up the teaser and we'll look up next week as well, as we're getting close to midnight here. Um, <laughs> Gregor, exactly. The targets are literally the the Whitakers from West, the Whites from West Virginia. That's you're saying Whitakers, yes. The wonderful whites of West Virginia. Everybody needs to watch that, by the way. That's hilarious. If that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, God, it's been, it's been like uh, 10 years, I guess. All right. Um, Musi, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to go too far forward. I know a lot of people have read the books here, and, and uh, we could say this is all spoilers or whatever, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try to enjoy it. There's going to be some changes. Um, believe me, I love to teach Chris how to cut a new lace front. And give him a tutorial on how to glue a wig. Oh, no, that's all right. I'll just stick it on with a little net. That's all it is. That's that's all I need. Um, yeah. So we'll pull it up. Yeah, chicken the jail cool. Not, I, I haven't seen the teaser yet either. So I'll watch it with you. Oh, what's up, Alex? Uh, real quick. Um, so Chris, it's Alex Montero. What's up, Alex? How you doing, man? Uh, two questions. Uh, how many seasons do you think the Dance of the Dragons will be, and what story you want to tell after their person with Aegon's conquest? Uh, yeah, I would tend to agree. Um, since they're going to do Dunkin' Egg separately, which will be in the future, uh, yeah, I think we'll do three to four of the dance, and um, then we'll have a anthology. And I, I would, I would like to see the conquest. Honestly, I would like to see Visenya and Rainies, and uh, and all that stuff. So I would say that since we're going to get Dunkin' Egg, which would be my second choice, my first choice, we're going to get that anyway in a separate show. So that'll be essentially the same uh, it could actually fit into this if they wanted to do it that way um so yeah i agree the targaryen that mounts the world <laughs> says charles <laughs> Gee, all kinds of names all right yes uh good night shelly have a good one thank you for hanging out appreciate it thank you thank you all right so let me um uh, play you some wonderful music i'll be right back and then we'll watch the teaser before we get out of here and start everybody's week so give me one second and i will be right back
Alrighty, alrighty. Uh, let me stop that. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Took the I took the itchy wig off. I'll try to remember it next week. I'll try to lay it out, make it my routine. Uh, let me grab the teaser over here. So I have to move everything around. So House of the Dragon episode five trailer and I'll break this down in a video as well assuming everything goes good this week so let me move this over here and then my chat over here sorry guys I gotta move this shit around here all right so we got the preview uh, it's just a minute long okay um I guess this is the yeah, okay that's the official one let me do the display thing let me pull it up here let me make it full screen you guys enjoying the meow mix randy the the awesome music on the uh free twitch uh playlist yeah man <clears throat> good night maria have a good one thank you for hanging out thank you thank you appreciate it have a good week um have a good one, Becky, as well. I know some people are heading out. We're going to go over this trailer real quick. So let me do this. I think I have... Uh, okay, I do have myself in the corner. I got it full screen. I think I can play these pretty safely. But uh, let's see what we got here. I have not seen this yet. Um, Nicole, hold on one second. So we're four episodes in, and I can say that I'm very happy with House of Dragon. After the way it got in, I was hesitant coming into the series, but loving it so far. Yeah, I think a lot of people felt that way. We were wondering, like, what's the point? You know, uh, we know how the Targaryens end and blah, blah, blah. And I know it's, um, but, I mean, you can't help it. Uh, by the way, Nat, Nata. There you go, Nata. She better still be here. I got a water for Nata for the um, Riddick Dono. Thank you. Um. Uh, oh, Haley. There you go, Haley. Haley Bricky. Okay. Directors confirmed. Damon can't get it up. Okay. Ed. Damon's got some uh, mental problems there. Issues. I mean, he had the short strokes initially, but I guess he lost it. So, no, Meg. We're we're, we're about to start it. So here we go. Here's the preview. Let's check out what we got. Uh, I can. Probably let this play safely, but I'll stop it just in case and talk about the scene. So here we go. Okay, so this right immediately follows. You you know what this is like. You got the awesome shot here of uh, King's Landing and the Valarion fleet here. So this is probably going to be the return of Corlys, right? Um, uh, again, before I continue, I'm, this is potential spoilers. So anybody that don't want to know anything. About next week, I, I I need to remind myself, try to to say this before we do these previews. Um, so anybody that don't want to know anything that's coming, um, I'm going to mention what I think it is. Obviously, it may be incorrect, but potential spoilers. So, um, ten seconds so we continue. If anybody wants to uh, to take off, I completely understand. Oh shit! Look at that. Um, <laughs> Sammy, I have medicine for Damon. Yeah, that's I don't know why they're doing that to him though. I don't remember that being a thing. I guess he's got to have a weakness since he's a badass warrior um, fan favorite. They, it's like they did that to uh, to John, right? They made John's thing small, and they literally said that. And the like, what does it matter? Because um, Kit Harrington is too perfect. Um, Alex, uh, yeah, Black Fire Rebellion would be awesome too. Yes, no, that that would be great. And that's the thing, we get up close to that era uh, with Duncan Egg, we can start seeing that kind of stuff. So, and, and even Blood Raven, um, Damon Blackfire, uh, we'll see Dark Sister again. Uh, we'll see, um, you know, the, the, all this kind of stuff we're seeing now. We'll see that also continue. Um, so yeah, that'll be cool too. All right, here we go. So I think this is, um, the return of the Valarian fleet here. You can see the seahorse. This is obviously the biggest fleet. The Ironborn were not a thing at this time as far as big pirates and biggest fleets. Um, so 
I'm imagining this is going to be Rainey's here on like May Lee's probably coming to King's Landing. She's flying. This may be Lena or Lenor. We'll see on Sea Smoke potentially, and then the Valarion's returning to King's Landing. So this is kind of their reunion after this marriage proposal we saw where um, I believe um, we're going to see, or obviously we're going to see, uh, for, you saw it from the teasers, um, uh, Renera and Lenor get married. So I believe this is going to be the big return of the sea snake. I wish to propose a uh, marriage. So yeah, there you go. You hear, you hear us there. Propose marriage. To my daughter and heir. A royal wedding. So there you go. So he looks like he's coming down, proposing the thing to Corliss, trying to make up with him. Um, and this is going to be the wedding. Obviously, this is the wedding. You see both houses right here. We saw this in the teaser before, so no big surprises here. I hope to herald in a second age of. Now, this is, I believe I'm correct here. So, I believe this is Rainey's on Maylee's. This is what I said in the teaser breakdown, um, for sure. Um, you see the red. You see it's not Caraxes, but the red. So I am I'm not I am colorblind, but I can see that's red <laughs> enough. It's definitely and this is the gray. This should be sea smoke again. So we saw um him before in the last episode. So this should be Lanor coming to King's Landing. So Lanor and, and Rainey is riding to King's Landing as uh the sea snake brings his fleet. So the same kind of shot from a different angle. Dragons <laughs> Oh, there we go. So we got closer shots this time. So that does pretty much confirm that. Does it not? Is that not a red dragon to you, Maylees? Yeah, because we definitely know it's not. Um, you see the shorter neck. So he, this is kind of the regular dragon. I'm doing air quotes, obviously. And this is sea smoke we just saw. So that's the gray one. So that's exactly who that is. Our nearest succession will be challenged. Yeah. So they're here now talking about it so that's clearly who it's going to be uh, Ari fan my husky is sick right now because he's 12 he's 12 refuses to walk tonight scared for him sorry for riddick up all his will but that sucks Ari. i know um yeah no riddick is he's doing okay he's um definitely recovering quick from the surgery part i just got to keep his damn nose uh protected somehow but it's hard to do so he could still bleed a little and definitely has already um where you see smoke you see fire fire Exactly, Mizuma. Hey, that's a good, uh, that's a good little saying there. So yeah, this is we saw this from the teaser. So this is where we get them coming in, probably during the wedding. Oh, we see the Lannisters. See Jason and Tylen coming in here. So right now, you got to remember now that the Sea Snake has been off the council. You see Tylen coming in, and then Jason, the twins here, same actor by the way, who played um, Sir Hugh of the Vale. Um. Yeah, Betray King. Yes, they saw the play in Flea Bottom. Yes, they did. Um. So anyway, so this may be interesting here. Uh, I guess they're just coming to the wedding here, but he is now on the council, uh, kind of taking his spot. So we'll see how that plays out. So Lannisters back in the house. Knives will come out. Kristen Cole, we know what you did. We know what you did last summer. We know what you did now, man. Oh, hold on. Back that up. Who is this? Oh. What what is that? I can't tell who that is. There's a blade. That looks like a poisoning. We see uh this reminds me of Joffrey. What's going on here? Let me back that up a little bit. So Kristen Cole. This is uh Allison. Oh, we're gonna have a brawl. Okay. So we're gonna have a brawl at the wedding. Hmm. I can't see a little, little blurry here. I can't see. Uh, okay, that's somebody throwing a Valarion over the table. I can't tell who that was. It just got. Okay, that's Lanor getting thrown. Is this the Lannisters versus the? Um, uh. I don't know. Wait, wait. Then again, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, this is still young. Renette. They're just now getting married. So, yeah, never mind. Uh, yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be uh, break bones for sure. Uh, break bones is going to get uh, broken bones. So that's probably what the scene is with Kristen Cole for sure. Uh, Dothraki wedding. Yeah, anything less than three deaths considered a dull affair. 
So yeah, there we go. So there, there's break bones. There he is. Uh, just, uh, just he was clear that time. So yeah, this is probably gonna be Kristen Cole uh, making break bones, broken bones. I'm assuming. Right there. Allison is going to turn. That's probably when they actually proposed the wedding. I'd imagine he's on. Now this is Driftwood. So, or the, the Driftwood Throne. So this is going to be on Driftmark where the king's going to him. So this looks like to be the Driftwood Throne here, which is very cool to show because we're supposed to see a lot more Driftmark this season. So Viserys is not going to wait for him. He's going to go to him to propose this wedding. So that's cool. And then they'll come back, I guess, and do it in King's Landing since we, I believe we saw it was in the throne room before. So uh, very cool. He's going to go to Driftmark to propose that wedding. That's where I heard the voiceover. Damon, let's see. Let's hear the voiceover. He said the king will die. I don't mighty. The king will die. Whoa. Okay. Otto's saying the king will die. Will die. And if Rhaenyra succeeds him, war will follow. Damn. Okay, so he's already. I don't know if there's going to change something with the health issues there. I don't think he's dead right there. I don't believe that's the case. Probably drunk, but Otto's already saying he's going to die, so he knows all this stuff. Remember, they've been saying he's been like uh, talking to the maester, like on the side, right? Which makes you think they're in league together with the whole uh, maester conspiracy, and you know, keep it secret about all these skin wounds that won't heal. So he's this is they're changing some stuff up here, apparently. So Otto, let me let me back it up again. Otto says he's gonna die. The king will die. And if Rhaenyra succeeds him, war will follow. Okay, so Yeah, they're kinda of, they're moving quick. They're setting this up quick, already saying it straight out. You know, we can't have Rhaenyra, so there you go. <clears throat> yeah, BAP, exactly. Otto stay plotting. He is a cocksucker. Um, sorry. Uh, betrayed King, the only mushroom we'll see is Viserys. I know, it makes me mad. I do want to see mushroom. Um, uh, Chris, did it look like... Uh, Meg, uh, Chris, did it look like Crispin was giving his sword to Allison? It did look like uh, he was doing that, but I don't know if that would be the wedding scene. I don't know if that was the same scene, but it did. I did think of that. He was pulling it out. And it wasn't in like in a fighting manner. So um, we're going to see shit happen pretty quick here, apparently. Tim All right. Will follow. So trouble at the wedding. Was that? Hold on. I couldn't see who that was. I can't see who that is. Was that? Is that Amond? Will follow. Uh, it's too damn blurry. I can't see who that is falling off. To rule. Oh, so he's just straight out saying it. So this is when... He's no longer hand here, I guess. Um, maybe he's, this is like uh, before he goes type of thing. To rule. So there it is. I think that's it. It's really actually short this week. So let me play that last little section. I don't think Viserys is like... You see his skin there. They're, they're doing something on his arm. So something's going on, and it's not It's not grayscale, I don't think. That kind of looks like it, don't it? They're changing. Changing things. And if Rhaenyra succeeds him, war. Will it's all Otto here, right? The follow. wedding. Yeah, maybe break bones again. I don't. I don't know, uh, Meg. I can't. I cannot get this to a spot. I mean, obviously, it's YouTube. If I download, I could probably stop it on a frame. I can't get to a spot where I can tell. Him, I can only see. It looks like brown hair here, white horse. So I can't really tell. That looks like a maester's robe back there. I can't tell. Wait a minute, and I can't see what was going on down there. Uh, somebody. Okay, that's the royal thing. So I bet you this is Viserys getting off, coming back to King's Landing after he's went to Driftmark, perhaps, and maybe he collapses here. As I think that's what's going on down here, because she kind of jerks when he collapses, I believe. Yeah, it is. I believe so. Okay, yeah, I, I see. Can't see that good. There's white hair where the mouse is. There's just white here. He falls. So he's collapsing, coming back from Driftmark here. So and Allison is, is, like, scared. So the king's health is obviously failing here quickly now. Prepare Aegon to rule. 
And now she's put in this weird spot. Again, this is for the show. At this point in the book, she's already on board. She wants Aegon to rule. She doesn't want Rhaenyra to rule. So that's what they're changing. So that's it. That's uh, pretty short for this week. I think that was all. Anyway, so break bones action. Going to have a, a fun wedding, it looks like. It looks like there's going to be a poison poisoning. Drift Mark and the uh, Drift... The king will die. Yeah, I, I can't... And Arm, Arm just looks more and more like Grayscale, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what they change, but there you go. There's a quick little rundown of uh, next week on House of the Dragon. Um, all right. I will have to download that for a video anyway, so I'll just leave that open for now. All right, and then move this back over here. There we go. Uh, and that's... All right. Anyway. Bat, the throne is poisoning him. Yeah, I mean, they, there is a, a I don't I don't necessarily believe that it's like a, a th real thing, but there is this suspicion that the throne cuts those not worthy and essentially cur it's almost like a curse. Uh, Murato, Damon, yeah, I did say it looked like maybe, uh, but it's hard to tell with the blur of what whether it's white mane or white hair. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Uh, Demon's Gate. Um, you're you're probably absolutely right. I didn't even think about that. The Damon's wife. Um, um, sl slight spoiler warning here. Uh, I will just say that. So uh, will this will be a. Sp a l it's not a big deal, but it is a spoiler. All right, someone. If you might want to know anything, uh, syphilis, Randy. Maybe it might be. Um, so yeah, that I didn't even think about that. It, yeah. Uh, so this is probably going to be. That's why Damon has the smile. So. The question is now, this is the interesting stuff that was we were saying that might be changed from the books. Damon was probably there, but he was not in the book, so they may change this. So, all right, Becky, have a good one. Thank you for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Have a good night. Um, yeah, so Damon's there. That's going to be uh, his wife, the bronze bitch, probably falling off her horse, and that it will be... Uh, that'll free Damon up. Let's just say that that'll free Damon up. I won't go any further. I think so, Sleepy Immortal. I think so. Um, makes sense for the time and yeah. I I just I guess I assumed that would probably happen off screen. Um, I was actually surprised it didn't happen this episode. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um. Okay, Doc, uh, Damon was in a robe. Okay, for sure about that falling horse. And that, see, that will be a big change because, yeah, that's some of the questions we talked about early on before this show started in some of our live streams leading up to it in some videos I did was that will some of these deaths be accidents like they are in the books? You know what I mean? So this uh, may be a little move by Damon here, it looks to be. looks like that's what's going to happen. So um, we'll see if they confirm that, but it looks like that's the – what it's going to be for sure. Uh, Dustin, I guess, uh, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of questions about Damon. I guess not, man. Um, uh, I didn't see mushroom. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see anybody uh, that remind, thought I thought was mushroom. I think we're all looking for mushroom. But I'll I'll do a a little quick um, video breakdown of that in more more detail if I see it, for sure. Um, Bolting Vulture, what's up, man? Uh, hello, hello. Just finished the episode. Great stuff. Cracks in Viserys slash Allison uh, tapestry laugh. More cracks in there. Allison, the Rogue Prince, Chris, Crispin Cole, Otto, amazing. Yep, uh, absolutely. He started to change. Things are getting a little darker for everybody, so it's um, it's getting good, getting spicy, getting spicy, as they say. Um, a betrayed king, yeah, Rhaenyra with a seat at the small council, new cupbearer. This is interesting. Yeah, this is some changes here. Um, Viserys is sprouting mushrooms. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they're going to change the. Um, uh, well, yeah, Meg, that's what I was saying uh, earlier, too, the, the diabetes thing, which is probably a thing, but there's something else. I, you know, just for the sake of not, if there's if they see if they change it, there is something else, obviously, for you book readers to know what's going on. So, um, anyway, it looks like they're adding some stuff to uh, the, the health issues. But, 
All righty, I guess. Um, uh, Shelly, yeah, wanting mushroom POV. Yeah, but the uh, the reason, and they could still show him, but the idea is that they, they're just kind of taking some of mushrooms and some of the maesters and all that stuff and uh, Septon's stories and kind of determining what's truth for the show. Um, but we could at least see him, you know what I mean? Uh, and it was, some things are going to be confirmed, obviously, that Mushroom was right. Like, I think we just saw Damon uh, and the horse scene. So Mushroom thinks that's the case. Yeah, I think that's the case, Meg. Um, diabetes, but there are other things that we'll, we'll see. But it, they haven't been hinting at that yet, so they may just change it all together. Uh, Alyssa Casanova, no, they did not. Um, apparently, you know, I thought when I watched it that Damon was just fucking with her head and got her kind of into it and then stopped and left. Um, apparently, the showrunners, somebody said the showrunners confirmed, uh, maybe the, after the episode thing, which I have not watched, that Damon has uh, uh, an issue, uh, ED issue. Um, yeah, Randy, exactly. The throne punishes weakness. That's the, uh, that's the saying. Um, uh, Bolting Vulture could the scrum at the wedding be first blood I mean it looks like somebody's going to die there I don't think it's going to be I mean I guess you could call it first blood I, it's different from what I'm thinking about what I keep kind of referring to that I don't want to spoil um, but I, that I think will come at the end of the season but uh, uh, I don't I guess not and I think that's going to be ever um, a different issue I don't think it's directly related necessarily so i don't i wouldn't call that first blood in the dance as if, if that's what you're asking we'll see though what they do they can change some things up <clears throat> karen yeah damon yeah i don't know why why are they making damon i don't know that's odd i guess uh they need him to have a, a weakness or something or it's it maybe it's, it's supposed to be psychological or, or whatever because uh you know his needed to be recognized by his brother um and i think his genuine care for Rhaenyra. scrum at the wedding appears to cover the storylines from the wedding turn yeah that's true um could be uh, combining some things betray king um Uh, Jasmine, uh, I don't remember them saying that though. Uh, they, uh, said he, he wasn't in control anymore and didn't like that, which is why he pulled away. See, that's the way I took it. Like it wasn't a, a physical thing. Yeah, maybe, but I thought he, uh, turned her around. I'm trying to remember exactly. I'll rewatch it anyway, but, oh, well. Um, anyway, yeah, it looks like they're adding whatever, like you're saying, vascular issues and all that stuff. Y'all mentioned that last week, and I, I agree. I just don't – because I think we would have probably gotten hints already of the the book illness. I mean, obviously, probably diabetes-type thing that it wouldn't know about. These majors are idiots, and they're way behind. <laughs> it's, um, anyway. Uh, Bolting Vulture, we're talking about the same first blood. I think they might play the timeline of having – um, I don't know. I, I'm okay. I'll just say just for, for to avoid any spoilers for people. My first blood is, I mean, it's kind of like two things. I honestly, it's really, let's just say at the council, you could call that one, or I would call like the actual battles or whatever. I would call that, I'll say storm's end. Um, that's what I'm thinking about. One of those two, either one you could consider, I guess, but, um, that's what I call first blood. So I don't know. I think it's too early for that at the wedding. <clears throat> Amanda Kane, hello, hello. Okay, I'm late to the party, but did the high tower chick have another female baby? Uh, so no, th yes, she. Well, she. We never saw her, but Helena is in the show. So Helena was second. So she had Aegon. Right, obviously, Aegon's like four by now. Helena, we never saw, and she was holding um, uh, Aemond. So she has three at this point. But we never saw Helena yet, which is... Uh, Helena will play a part two, and she is a dragon rider later, so she'll have a bigger role later on as well. So three kids as of now. 
uh, and one more to come. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for hanging out. We'll get out of here. It's about 12.20, so I will go um, watch again, uh, scribble down anything I missed, and then start preparing for tomorrow's video. Um, assuming everything goes well and Riddick stays, uh, um, he's still in good shape and all that, which uh, I hope, hope is, that's the case, then I'll try to do regular videos this week. Um I'll do the breakdown for this episode, the little preview like we did there, but break it down in a, in a shorter video. Uh, and then I want to talk Rings of Power in a separate thing. I may just do like a quick little little five-minute or six-minute video or something on Rings of Power if I can get to it. I had actually started to type out notes last week before all this shit went down with Riddick, so um, I do want to talk about it because I think there's some middle ground there about some things, uh, uh, definitely things that I don't like about it at all. And some things I think are pretty damn good as well. But um, anyway, uh, thank you everybody for all the super chats. Really appreciate all the love and people sending me messages asking about Riddick and uh, on you know social media. Follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, if you miss you know things like that last week where I couldn't stream on Sunday, everybody didn't see that little post on YouTube, but I'll, I posted on Twitter. So follow me there. All the things you know what to do. Um, thank you again, African Scholar, Lady Eternal, uh, Doc Holiday. Um, Jan, uh, Jason Weeks, uh, let's see, Greenleaf, Matthew, Styles, um, Guild, Acoustic Blake, uh, Raging Cajun, K Dubs, Nata, uh, Josh for becoming a member, uh, Hedgie for the super chat, Eternal Master for subscribing, Lady Jen for the super chats, Josh for the super chat, um, Eric, uh, Mishima, Dakota, Eric. My cousin Eric Melton and Dark Side Droids, and then John Ruck as well. Thank you for all the super chat subscriptions, all that good stuff. Uh, channel memberships, really appreciate it. Everybody, have a good night. I will get busy watching again. I, I know a lot of these channels, you probably already watch them, so it makes me wonder if I just need to go live and leave it alone because a lot of people get these early screeners and can have their videos done at 12, you know, 10 01. Um, so I don't, I don't know, but, uh, I don't know how much I can offer anymore, but uh, I'll get I'll get to work. Assuming Riddick's doing okay, and he is for now. So thank you for all the love and asking and all that good stuff as well. So, alrighty, uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, have a good one. Have a good week. Be on the lookout for those. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.